It's so ice to see you. Here's your look at the Mattel Batman Missions. This is True Moves, Mr. Freeze. The figure features 11 points of articulation and a big thank you to viewer Bill who took the time to send this my way. Before we do anything, we're going to figure out how tall True Moves Mr. Freeze is. True Moves. Doesn't True Moves remind you of an 80s title for a movie in which a kid goes to another new town? Of course, is ridiculed until he eventually joins like a dance competition? True Moves? Maybe with star Corey Haim? True Moves. I'm here all night. The figure stands 11.8 inches, oh, almost 12 inches tall, which works out to be 29.9 or about 30 centimeters in height. <laughs> True moves. It writes itself. I, I'm sure there's a movie called True Moves. The figure comes with accessories, only one of which can actually be removed. The one that can be removed is his ice dome helmet. It kind of looks like the top of a capsule in which you would get from a vending machine and then the other half would be here, likely filled with stickers or candy, and it fits over top of Mr. Freeze's head. The problem is, it only fits one way. You can't fit it this way, that's awkward. You can't even fit it this way, that's not right. It has to only fit this way, this side forward. And even getting it onto his head, let's see if I can actually try it the other way. No, no, it doesn't, doesn't fit that way. Fitting over, head, over his head can be tricky. Ultimately, when you do put it over top of his head, it's really hard to kind of make out his face. The packaging actually even has, if you look at it, well, if we look at the packaging right here, true moves, there it is right there. His face is a different color. His face is actually white, or the dome is clear. Something is different. It's not the same head. Well, it's the same head sculpt. You know what I mean. It's not, it's not the same color. Uh, instead here they've kind of gone with a translucent blue i'm you know what i'm digging that i like the fact it's translucent blue i could just do this that would be an indicator that's translucent some people would say that's rather ridiculous but it's a neat looking head sculpt it's a shame though it gets almost hidden by the fact that you have to add this dome to his head which i have to also add once again is difficult to put into place from this standpoint being that the coloring of the dome is such a dark blue instead of clear it's hard to kind of make out his face. I only really see his eyes, and I kind of get the glimpse of a nose and a mouth. I wish that they could have done this as at least a clear dome, if anything. I love the head sculpt. I just wish that the dome was clear. What's interesting also about the head sculpt is he does have posability. He's got a ball joint, but the ball joint only works when you have the helmet off. And in fact, the one other problem with the head too is when you have the head turned, it passes the point in which now the dome can clear it. So even like putting the dome on his head, it has to be facing straight on or the dome is not going to go over top of it. Sort of a mishap from uh, Mattel. It's unfortunate, like I said, you can't turn his head. It'd be nice also if you could have had something here that you could have turned his head. But I think I'm asking for too much for a figure line like this. And the figure is generally quite light. One of his other accessories is this neat looking ice gun. Man, I would love to take that out and be able to show you guys a better look at it or be able to put it into his other hand. You know, the other hand that looks like it should be able to grip something? Well, here's the problem. The gun, as you can see, has been molded to his hand. What? Why would they do that? That's not good. You can't take the gun off. Why would they then tease you with another gripping hand on this side? It's almost as if they're telling you, hey, you can put this over here, buddy. No, 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 try it, try it, put it over here. Ah, you can't, no, you can't. It's molded shut, it's molded in place. I mean, we've moved along enough in techno technology for action figure producing. You would think by this, by this game, 2019 or 2018 when these were made, we've established you can make a gun that fits into a hand. Why did they feel so compelled to mold it to his hand as one piece? This really makes no sense to me whatsoever. It's a neat looking gun. I mean, again, it's missing some paint. 
The sculpt is good, but it's missing, missing some paint just to kind of jazz it up. Down below these little canisters, they could have painted it in blue, but luckily, I guess you could just go in there and paint it. Unfortunately though, they didn't do it. They just didn't do it. It's, it's up to you. Um, as for the figure itself, I guess it's true moves come from the fact it's a very poseable figure. Why can't they just do this in a smaller scale variety? Why do you have to buy a larger scale figure? As good as it is, actually, it is a really neat looking figure. But why do you have to buy a larger scale figure to get things like this on the legs? The smaller figures couldn't do that. Smaller figures, I think they did have the knee bend, but they couldn't do this on their legs. They could do this on their arms, but they couldn't do this on their legs. Why do you have to spend the plastic Mattel to produce a larger variety of figures to give you the same thing that, a, that somebody, even like a kid or an adult, would want to get in a smaller scale? Just doesn't make any sense to me. Paint-wise, he's a really neat looking figure. I mean, he's very light. I mean, it feels like this is all hollow plastic. He's got neat looking details to him, although he does look very flat, looks very thin. He reminds me a lot like the, the new Batman Adventures, Mr. Freeze, sort of this color palette that they went with. Overly quite black, and then he's got this kind of bluish gray happening here in his boots his shoulder pads, and then the top area in which the dome plants in place. And my silver there happening in the front as well. And for no other reason whatsoever, there he's got a belt that's a different gray than everything else on his body. Why couldn't the gray have been this color right here? These are questions that I know I'm never gonna get answers for. Uh, one thing that's weird about the figure though is, is the positioning of his feet. I don't know if you can see this or not, but you can't turn the feet. You can't. You can only bend the knee. You can't turn them. And yet, look at the angle in which they're placed. Like this, like this. You can already see what the problem is. The figure doesn't firmly plant. Though he stands well, he can't firmly plant himself on a display surface. I never feel like, he kind of looks like he's bow-legged or, what's the opposite of bow? I guess that would be bow-legged, but his feet are crookedly bent inward. Why they can't be flat, why the feet can't be brought out straight out, makes no sense to me. I like, again, like the color palette of this guy. He's kept very too much a dark colored Mr. Freeze, sort of an imposing Mr. Freeze. This would be kind of the design that I would really like for a DC movie version of Mr. Freeze. And no, not that ridiculous one that uh, uh, Schwarzenegger ended up posing, uh, playing in the Batman and Robin. But again, like, I just don't understand the way his feet are sculpted. Why would they make them deliberately on angles when you can't turn the feet themselves? They've also got this plastic marbling, which is usually an indicator that they're using cheap plastic. Uh, it's very much apparent by the fact that the figure feels extremely light. All right, so let's talk about his posability. We'll have to take the helmet off to do this. His head rotates left and right. Hinges, eh, eh, not much. Angles, eh, not much, but the head does rotate and it kind of stops when it gets here. So he ends up having to kind of wipe his nose against it to, uh, to get his head to turn all the way around. Again, I like the translucent of the plastic. Just wish you could have turned the head and still be able to put the dome in place. And why is it such a difficulty to find out which way I'm supposed to put this? My goodness. So we're gonna put that back into place. Uh, his arms hinge out. So only about there, and I think a lot of the culprit is this piece right here of his, of his shoulder pad. Doesn't allow the arms to go any further out from there. Uh, the arms rotate all the way around. He has a hinge in the elbow, which also allows the forearm to rotate. Like that, like that, and like that. And also you can rotate the hand. Uh, unfortunately, nothing in the torso. The legs, however, split quite generously out, forward and back, bend at the knee, and again, nothing in the feet. I like this guy. I like this Mr. Freeze. He's tall, he's imposing, he looks scary. Unfortunately though, he's just put together really badly. Why can't they have made the figure with the necessary means to be able to remove the gun from his hand? I mean, this is basic stuff, guys. This is stuff that we were getting back in the day with Kenner. Kenner even knew how to put guns into movable into hands and then simply pop the gun out and put it into the other hand. You literally have a clamp hand right there. You're teasing us by the fact that you can't take the gun off of this hand. He is posable, that's one good thing, and it's something that sadly, the smaller variety of Batman Missions figures simply just don't have. 
I still never know why companies make decisions the way that they do. Smaller scale figures with possibly things that could be lost or swallowed by children, smaller scale figures have removable accessories. I don't know why for a Mr. Freeze this size with an equally much larger scaled weapon could not have been something that could have been removed. In fact, I mean, even like looking at his other hand, he literally has a trigger finger. He has a trigger finger. And yet they decided that they don't want to have the gun removable. I guess this is something that they decided at the last minute. Why bother to spend the cost of producing a separate mold for the gun when we can just make the arm mold with the gun intact? We can save the cost of at least of one mold. This is a very cool imposing, ah, I see what I did there. It's a very cool imposing looking Mr. Freeze. It's the kind of Mr. Freeze I would love to see in a smaller scale. And unfortunately, until we get one of those, we can benefit from a true moves, <laughs> great dancing competition. A true moves version of Mr. Freeze, just a little bit bigger, of course. He's got a neat design. And like I said, I like the translucent head sculpt that they gave him. It's just a shame that you can't move his head when you put it underneath the dome. And don't get me started about how that dome gets put into his head in the first place. Why decisions, decisions, always bad decisions. Either way though, thank you to viewer Bill who took the time and picked this up and sent this my way. Today's video, we were having a look at the Batman missions, true moves, <laughs> Mr. Freeze. Oh, Mr. Freeze. You know what's rather interesting as well? I didn't even show you, but if you'll go back to the beginning of this review, yeah, why not? Go back to the beginning of this review and check out the package end of this review. They've got a picture of Mr. Freeze literally holding the gun in his other hand. There you go. Just want to add that in final looks. You guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Batman missions reviews. There's a whole playlist for that. And stay tuned because we're going to have a look at some more Batman mission figures in the upcoming videos. If you're new to this channel and have yet to hit that little subscribe button down below, make sure you certainly do so because you don't want to miss out on any one of these very cool, very awesome videos, if I do say so myself. As always, guys, thanks for watching, as you always do, and I'll see you next time.